Alright, please stand as we worship.
Lord, we love you so much. We thank you for being the good father that you are to us, Lord. Each and every day, you're so faithful to us. Lord, you, you're so great. You're so merciful. You're so kind to us. Lord, we love you so much. Words can't even express it. Lord, we thank you for the, the father figures you have for us here on this earth, Lord. And I, I, I know they're not all perfect, Lord, but you are. Lord, you're so perfect. And we thank you for for being who you are in our lives. And thank you for sending um, good men to be good fathers here on this earth. Lord, I'm so thankful for my father. I'm, I'm thankful that I am a father. Lord, such a blessing in my life. And, and, and again, words can't express uh, the feeling you have when you, when you become a father. We thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I uh, ask blessings on each and every one here. Lord, uh, just continue to bless us through this service. Lord, as we aim to I uh, praise you to the fullest, Lord. Help me to uh, sing the song I'm about to sing and, uh, and help Brother Edgar preach to us today. Whatever you have us to hear and help us grow closer to Christ, the only one who can save us. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Thank you, Brother Rowan. Please turn the Bible with me to the Gospel of John, the first chapter. The Gospel of John, the first chapter. Today, of course, is Father's Day. And I appreciate, again, the Father in our midst. But I really, really appreciate the spiritual fathers that we have in our church family. In many areas of the Bible, you're called elders, spiritual leaders that encourage and edifies the church. And I appreciate every one of you. The Gospel of John chapter 1 is... The context is about the Word, the Logos of God, the spoken Word of God became flesh. He dwelt among us, the Lord Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth. The world would rather have darkness and not the light. He came unto his own, his own did not receive him. And we come to uh, these verses, beginning in verse 12, that says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who place their faith in him, who trust and obey him, who follows him in repentance and faith. To those who believe in His name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Speaking of Jesus Christ. In the scriptures, I know there are many family groups, many tribes that are mentioned throughout the scriptures, but there are two main families that are mentioned in scripture. One is the family of God. God is our Father. Yes, He created all that there is. He created mankind. But you are a son of God, when you place your faith, a child of God, when you place your hope, your trust in Jesus Christ as Lord, Master of your life, Master of all that you are, of Lord and Savior of your life, you're a child of God. You're in the family. The other family mentioned in the Scriptures is the devil is your father. Those who refuse Jesus Christ, who walk after the flesh and not after the Spirit, the devil, Jesus told some that you are of your father, the devil. So, everyone in here this morning, you're I hope and pray that every one of us is in the family of God because our hope and trust is in Jesus Christ alone. Not by the will of man, but by the will of God through faith in Jesus Christ alone. You're my brother. You're my sister. If that is the case. When we're in Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 30, we, we looked at this last Wednesday night. And this passage of Scripture says this, But of Him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that as it is written, He who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So that are, those are benefits, those are, that is who we are, in Christ Jesus, in the family of God. 
Now, as a parent, a spiritual mother, a spiritual father, or a physical mother, a physical father, or grandparents, or great grandparents, you are modeling. You are a living example to your children. You're modeling either one of the two. How do you model? And it is a lifelong experience that I am finding out myself. My, my dad, I still look to him as an example. And sometimes I learn what to do, sometimes I learn not what to do. <laughs> that was funny, everybody. <laughs> okay. Same with my children and my grandchildren. I'm a model to them. And sometimes I will tell my children, just do better than what I did. But we are modeling. So as a child of God, as a model, as a living example, a lifelong example, let me ask you this question. Even though you are a mother, father, physically and spiritually, are you an obedient child? Are you a loving child of God? You see, when my children were small, Whatever I was doing, they wanted to be right beside me when they were small children. All three of them. My son, I wasn't home that much, being in the military. But my two daughters, I was home a lot more. They wanted to be right beside me all the time to help me. To help me. And to correct them, as I told you before, our son, you just had to whip that boy. You just had to whip him. When a little boy said, when you say to a little boy, don't do that, and then they say, what you going to do about it, you got to whip them, amen? <laughs> you got to. But when they're little children, all you have to say is, because I told you so. Most of the time, that's what we say. But the older they get, that because I told you so doesn't work anymore, does it? It doesn't work. Those pesky little children grow up and they start asking questions and they start examining us. Examining us. Instead of, I told you so, they say, don't tell me, but show me. They say, don't demand it, but display it. That's what a teenager will say. And not only teenagers, I'm finding out young adults say that's the same thing. Teenagers and older, they want examples. Teenagers and older are good referees. They're good at blowing the whistle. They're good at throwing the flag. They're good at blowing the whistles and say fire to their example. You messed up. They're good at that. They're quick at it. Is that bad for them to be that way? No. That's part of growing up and learning. But the point is this. You are modeling before them. What kind 
of kid are you? What kind of child are you being at this moment? No matter how old you are, you are a child of our Heavenly Father. What kind of child are you? How is your relationship with our Heavenly Father? Are you living under authority yourself? Are you honoring your Father? Are you seeking to obey our Heavenly Father? Are you seeking His will? Just as, a, as our children grow up, they will begin to ask, is this God thing real? Is it real? And they're looking to you as the model and example. You see, if you're not in fellowship and obedience with your Father, the perfect Father, He's perfect. He's good in all that He does. If you're not in obedience and fellowship with Him through Jesus Christ, how do they even know what really obedience is? How do they really know what faithfulness is? What do they really know what commitment is all about if you're not being an obedient child yourself? In the Scriptures, Isaac knew that God was very real to Abraham. In the scriptures, Jacob knew God was real to Isaac. Joseph knew that God was real to Jacob. We move on in the scriptures. We see Solomon and Absalom. They knew God was real, very real to David, their father. But they also watched David. They also watched David disobey God's plan for the family, for family life. And they both destructed. They both just blew up. Solomon and Absalom. Rehoboam, he watched his daddy Solomon. It, Solomon was his model. And he watched Solomon betray God and, and, and turn sex into a God. He watched Solomon's heart be turned from loving God the one true and living God to loving many pagan gods. Then he watched him try to combine them both together. That's why Rehoboam saw him. He watched his dad give his life to foolishness and vanity trying to grasp the wind. Parents, what kind of child are you? When I say parents, I mean parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, spiritual parents also in our church family. It's very amazing how disobedient parents that God was just on the sideline and other things meant more to the family even on the Lord's day the day of worship. And they've led their children to be disobedient. If you're disobedient in the simple things, how can you be obedient in the, in the hardships of life? They watch their parents be being disobedient children themselves to their Heavenly Father. And I'm amazed how disobedient parents expect to have obedient children and teenagers. It's amazing. You see, it's a lot more than do what I say. Again, they want to model. 
They want an example. Not that any one of us is perfect. I find, I mean, those times in family with my children, those very meaningful moments where I have to say, I was wrong. I have repented. Will you forgive me? They need role models, even in the church. You're a modeling childhood to your child, so what are we to do? What are we to do? In the book, Passionate Parenting, I found four main truths that I want to share with you. Number one, pursue God and love Jesus with all your heart. I know that's the Sunday school answer, but that's the absolute truth. Your children know what you love the most. They know. Be passionate for Jesus with all your heart. You be an authentic Christian. You'd be an authentic Christian. I, I remember going over to some people's houses growing up. I was a PK, preacher's kid. And I'd go over to somebody's house, and not all of them. I grew up in a great community. But I'd come home sometimes and say, Mama, Daddy, you won't believe what they did. <laughs> They're different at their house than they are at church. Kids can pick up on that real quick, and they especially know about their parents, if you're authentic or not. Number two, obey your heavenly Father and let your children know. Let them know, I do not do this because, or I do this because. Let them know why. When you're living in obedience, one of the simple things in my in my book, in my mind at least, is like um, tithing. We told our children, we wrote the checks in front of them. And our children, they do little odd jobs growing up, and it was a blessing just to see them tie 20 cents or 50 cents or $10, that, that, that 10% of obedience. And I'm not saying all three of our children are perfect. They are not. Most of you watch them grow up, and we still have one that, oh, please pray. Please pray for her. But when you are obedient, show your children. Number three, don't get caught in the appearance trap. Don't act one way at church and another way at home. And believe me, I've been in that car myself. Whatever the trouble was in the week, for some reason, we would discuss it on the way to church. <laughs> the problem. And just, huh, 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 and then get out and say, praise the Lord. <laughs> Don't do that. Be the same. And that's the same about Dan Atchison, isn't it? <laughs> He's Dan Atchison here at church, and he's Dan Atchison out there. That's how we are to be in our Christian walk. Amen? Your children. What kind of model are you to your children? Number four. Prove your beliefs in biblical standards. Prove it to them. Model transparency, model confessing, model repentance. I know I told my son one time, I said, son, 
Did you see me fight? Half of your life fighting addiction? Didn't you watch me fight it? You stay away from it. Model repentance. Model confessing before them. Prove your beliefs. Show them in the scriptures. Now it's tough when they know scripture and they listen to some liberal preacher and that twist the scriptures and, 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 and show them one thing or, or church members that say, yeah, that's what your daddy believed, but I believe something else. It's tough, but you got to live it also in front of them. That's tough. I'm not, this is not an easy thing, is it? But you're a child of God. What kind of child are you to our Heavenly Father? Just like the loving Father God is, that would go running out in the field to grab a a son that was wayward as the father and the powerful son story grabs him, loves him. Just any one of us that know the Lord Jesus Christ pursues God. If you have been wayward, our Heavenly Father will come grab you up and love you as you repent. Model it. Be an example of it to our children and our families and to our children here at church. Again, I appreciate every one of our parents in this church family. I know we live in a very, very difficult times. Right now is time for you to step up to the plate and say no to things that come between your family and following the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't do it, whatever you're leading them astray with is not going to help them in life. Only the Lord Jesus can help them lead them to Christ as an example. Let's pray. Lord, God, as a, a father myself, I pray help and strength. I pray this for my church family. God, we, as you know, Lord, there are so many pitfalls and holes to step in. And it seems to be more and more that can distract us from following you, Lord Jesus, as obedient children. Lord, to, to be imitators of you. So many things that can lead us astray. But God, help every one of us to be obedient children. Help us not to turn right or left, but to stay on the path of following you, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, if there's somebody here who's not in the family, I pray your Holy Spirit, oh God, to please move in their heart. Please bring conviction. And oh God, I pray that they will choose and respond to you in faith and repentance. Lord God, may you have all glory during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. You can remain seated. If you would just bow in prayer and pray and if you want to be part of the family of God, if you want to trust Jesus, I'll be here to help you in any way. If the Lord has laid something else on your heart, if you 
would like for me to pray or one of the other ministers to pray with you. Please come, Brother Rose. Brother Jay, would you close us in prayer, please? 